Hey everybody, Adam here, and uh, we're back with a little more vintage. So, tonight, we're on the hunt for what in the ever-loving hell am I going to play this weekend for the Mana Trader's Swiss Rounds. So, looking through the deck dumps, and I see this Esper Tinker list. And that's all sorts of magical things for me. I love playing Esper, I love a Tinker deck, there's Mentor in this list, it seems gaps. So, what does this deck do? Okay, well, the answer is a little bit of everything. Uh, we've got a Monastery Mentor that we can go ahead, go Berserk, do our thing that way. Uh, we have Tinker, which can fetch us either Bolus's Citadel down here to go ahead and start casting our library till we cast the Mentor and then do all the things. Yeah, it works out. Or against some of the creature-based decks or things like Rug... We just tinker for Sphinx of the Steel Wind. And we go, okay, you can't answer this. I'm going to attack for six every turn and gain a bunch of life. Good luck, have fun. So that's pretty gas. Um, alternatively, we have a couple of Lavinias to kind of... The same way that P.O. will technically play, like, will play Lavinia to like hose each other out. You're like, okay, this is the Mirror Breaker. I'm going to say that you don't get to do your things. Haha, -ha, let's go. Uh, we get to do that. So we have a couple of Lavinias here. We have all of our pow power. We have all the Moxes, Black Lotus, Mana Crypt, Soul Ring, Ancestral, Time Walk. Uh, the only one we don't have is Twister because we are not that kind of combo deck. Uh, so we get uh, bra our Brainstorm, our Ponder, our Probe, our Misstep. Uh, we have a couple of Preordains to fill the round everything out a little bit. Our Narset. Uh, we are just a basically just a pile of restricted cards just is it good are we only allowed to play one we're probably playing that one um then we get to kind of fill some things out we have a prismatic ending to shut off things like to answer things like opposing graph diggers cages if our game plan is to tinker uh we have swords to plowshares if our opponent has something like say a containment priest that we need to deal with so we have a few different options. We also have Time Vault and Voltaic Key, so that uh, that's just another thing we can randomly our way into. Uh, or fuel in part by Urza's Saga. And that's the other part of the stack, is that at the end of the day, we're just like also this random Saga deck. We're just like, okay, we can make idiots and hold up all of our stuff and like play the beat down. And then just like when Saga goes off, we go ahead, we find ourselves some... Uh, a Voltaic Key, and then cast a Time Vault, and just take all the turns. So, then we go to our sideboard. Four Leyline in the Void, Rav Trap, Tabernacle of Pendrel Veil, Soul Guide Lantern. These are all for your bizarre graveyard decks. Uh, we've got some Fluster Storms, Force of Negations for all of your, like, blue spells, counter spell matchups. Then we have Swords to Plowshares for matchups where, against things like Bug where we need to think about creatures. Uh, also against things like Hogak. We have Hercules Recall against things like Shops. And then the one card I don't understand. So again, the, the full disclaimer here, there, a lot of these times I I just see a deck list and a deck dump. I think it looks sweet and I decide to play it. I don't do a whole lot of research uh, ahead of time. Some of these decks, for example, like PO and things like that, I've played before. I get the general concept. Uh, Tinker, blue Tinker Strategies, not new to this channel. Go back and check out the, the YouTube for our previous runs through Vintage Eternal Weekend playing blue Tinker. Uh, but, Mirren Crusader is the one card here that I'm just like, I don't know what you're here for. I feel like it's here to bully Bug. I feel like if we put it into play against a Bug deck, they just can't beat it. But I'm not sure anything else. So I'm curious to see how that pans out. My game plan is if we run into Bug, I'm going to board this in, and our Bug opponents can get real sad because they can't remove it, and I'm just going to, like, murder their Oko and block their Tarmogoyf and do whatever. So that's always dope. But beyond that, I have literally no idea what this Crusader is for. So we'll see if we figure something out to draw this lead. But, without any further ado, let us go ahead. I should have queued this up ahead of time. Let us go ahead and fire up this Vintage League and see if maybe Esper Tinker is where we're feeling for this weekend. Oh, 
Oh, and uh, quick aside. So this is a list from a one Curtis Thompson from a recent paper event. Uh, I found again found this list in the deck dumps. Um, shout out to Curtis. This deck looks rad. Curtis, if you ever see this, please explain what these Mirror and Crusaders are for. Other, like other than Bug, Bug is the obvious one, but I, I need to know what besides Bug I'm supposed to be playing this card for. Uh, we won. Um, this hand doesn't do anything. I'm gonna mulligan. We have a mentor. This is probably like the most questionable hand I've ever kept. Yep, you got it. What I'm really looking for here is just blue source. Opponent Ancestrals, sure, they know it resolves. Mox, yes. Top, sure. A. I feel like I'm actually pretty likely to force of negation just about anything here. So good. We lost the flat. Boo. Spin top. Yep, that seems correct. I don't know why we didn't do that before, but. We could have spun top and upkeep with Mox Emerald. <clears throat> we have now double spun. What was the point of that? Opponent just spun Mox Emerald, er, spun top in their my end step and their upkeep. Cool, good, great. Lost flip. I'm just gonna cast this.
sure. Heard it. Sometimes you just get to erase people in vintage. This is a thing I don't pe think people do enough. It's just like, I have a hand that is a quick kill. I said to my opponent, can you beat Mentor with Force of Will back up? So far, the answer is looking like probably not. Okay. This is where they probably beat it. This is PO. It's not a great PO, but it's PO. Mox. Top. Mox. No thanks. Sure. I mean, like, I'm going to cast this because it does the thing. That's hilarious. That is the first time in my life that I have ever cast Yawgmoth's Will for a prowess trigger. For prowess triggers. Oof. Okay. Well, let's get... Mystical, Vamp, I'm gonna grab Flusterstorms, Balance feels bad, Force Negation can get in. Then it's like, do I want to try to play the Hercules Recall game with P.O.? Like, that is a thing that has text. I think that we're better off just trying to fight a counter war. <clears throat> Sphinx of the Steel Wind also not at its best here. Could probably cut that. Take Plow. For the mentor that they assuredly have, as well as like their Lavinios and stuff. I don't hate that. This is like okay. It's not great, but it's fine. Mox, mox, mox. Land. gonna make land drops and say go
I'm gonna save this Yogg will. Ox, sure. I'm gonna play this land, play this pearl now. So opponent jammed it to hand that was all in on a, a turn one Karn, and we just beat it. That's what it seems like. I'm gonna cast Lavinia. Rainstorm resolves. Merchant scroll, sure. Five minute force. Buster. Yup, okay. Killing me, Smalls. And we cut the Sphinx. So I can't tinker for that. That sucks. Tinker for Lotus? Tinker for Lotus gets us there if this fetch resolves. Tinker? Lotus? Seems very good. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> cool. Well, first card off the top, Mentor, then uh, Tolarian Academy, then Demonic Tutor. Sure, this all seems great. Tutor for, like, Ancestral. Actually, probably Tutor for Top. Probably Tutor for Top. Play Top. Just set the whole thing up. Tutor for top was the answer there. That was dope. Hooray. We did it. We're currently 1-0.
For those of you who are joining a little late, hello, welcome. I'm Adam from Grand Rapids, Michigan. And tonight we are playing some Esper Tinker in Vintage. Uh, I found this deck, the, the, the short version is I found this deck list in a deck dump. It seemed sweet. Uh, paper, uh, player had recently done well with it at a paper event, and I decided this looked like the kind of thing that I wanted to do with my life. We'll see how I feel about that at the end of the night. But we, we beat PO, and we kind of bullied them, so that feels good. So for anyone who is new to what's going on here tonight on stream, uh, we have qualified for the Mana Traders Series Swiss Rounds this weekend, and this month the Mana Traders Series is Vintage. So we are trying to figure out what in the world we want to play in Vintage right now. I qualified for the event playing Blue White uh, Bird Blade. Hear me out. We're just going to keep this. If opponent doesn't have force of will, we win the game. Mox. Soul Ring. Talarian Academy. Tinker. Sack Mox. Get Citadel. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So we turn one Tinkered for Citadel. This seems like a very good position for us. Opponent has cast once upon a time. Alice or a shepherd. Sure. Is this where we're going to queue into people playing legacy decks again all night? Mox Emerald. Sure. Basic Forest. This spell is uncounterable. I accept. I promise you, well, I will. I will absolutely balance you for my own amusement. Rancor, yo. Not what we were literally looking to do with our life, but, uh... Oh, hey. Vault key? Any order? Land? Crypt? Time Vault? We'll take a key. like that a lot uh well mirroring crusader it's your time to shine friend i think fluster storm can get out of here i don't know what 100 percent what opponent's doing but they put rancor on a, a stupid uh creature so uh tabby also seems okay i think force negation is pretty questionable probably cut Citadel. I think that Sphinx is just good enough like the majority of the time. If 
between Sphinx and Mirren Crusader. I don't know how we lose this game. <laughs> Here I am, like, dunking on Mirren Crusader randomly being in our sideboard and game the, our second round of the night. We get queued into the deck that I'm thinking Mirren Crusader is, like, 100% to be. What a wild and crazy place we've come to. So I'm also in a place where I can just like kind of quick tanker. Yep. I'm in. This card's good. This card's good. I accept. This results. <clears throat> Allosaur Shepherd is fine. Shepherd results. Collector Roof Resolves. Lands, creatures, cards in hand, deal. This is the weirdest balance ever, but it makes them discard a card and sack a creature. Like, all of this feels fine. One has discarded Rancor. Now here's the real question. Is it worth popping my Lotus to Swords to Plowshares the Shepherd? I don't think so. I think the likelihood that we lose this turn are like is really low. Especially because this thing has lifelink and first strike. That's not Gaia's Cradle, that's good for me. That resolves. Second Shepherd kind of sucks. That's fine, I guess. Roby for two life. 
Their hand is just like infinite shepherds. I mean, I guess I give him a target for this wasteland. <clears throat> this card is actively bad. I don't think I particularly care about it. I think I'm thinking really hard about this when I don't need to be, but... Oh, okay. Rejuvenator's fine. Cat. I'm not really sure why opponent didn't play Wasteland there. I think opponent's now thinking the same thing. I will continue to attack with Sphinx of the Steel Wind. It's not close. I'll make another idiot. Like, that's fine. Yes. All of these things are fine. weird i think if, if i'm opponent there i don't think that i i don't think that i would have sacked wasteland there because this activates shepherd okay i'm gonna cast black lotus attack for damage results cool well that's a quick 2-0 secretly found best deck in the format I understand I'm being sarcastic I think this deck is neat. I don't think this is the best deck in the format. I think that our kind friend Curtis Thompson has come up with a particularly rad version of Tinker. But I don't think that this is anything like that crazy out of the out of the realm of what people are doing. I do like Esper over Grixis. I think that white cards offer a lot of really powerful effects in Vintage, 
balance being one of them. Balance is very good. Mentor, also very good. Lavinia, confirmed, very good. Tom, Noah, hello, welcome. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate all of you being here, but I know Tom and Noah specifically. Tom, I'm glad to hear your event went well. I'm sorry I couldn't make it. I, uh, I'm definitely interested in the next one for sure. Oh, and I, uh, I missed this. Uh, Sandoval, 21, 21, 21, thank you. Appreciate your follow. Yeah, Tom, my apologies for not being able to make the event. I was still under voluntary quarantine last weekend. Sounds good. Yeah, I, I found out... It looked amazing. I It looked like you guys had an incredible time. I want to be there for the next one. Um, yeah. I tell you what, uh, Tom, maybe we can even set something up out here. Because Beer City and a bunch of Gold Border cards sounds like a hell of a good time. And one of my, and my favorite spot just announced that they're getting ready for an expansion to add, like, a bunch more seating. And a full kitchen. So that would be pretty rad. But I am, uh, I'm very much in for the next one. Uh, we still need to get you out here, Tom. You keep telling me you're going to come out here and play Legacy with us, Tom, but you haven't shown up yet. What's going on with that? We're in for another one. Well, we lost the die roll. That's unfortunate. I'm gonna keep this. Mox is fine. Pitch this Narset. That's fair, Tom. Well, that's truly unfortunate. Opponent had double root maze on turn one. I'm gonna play my Mox. Tapped. I'm gonna play my land. Tapped. I Ganjo, sure. Damping Sphere, that's fine. I don't care about that. I will play this. I'm gonna cast this Lavinia. <clears throat> Tom, I'm just giving you a hard time. I know you'll make it out of here when you get a chance. Say you. Sure, 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 sure. Choke. Reasonable. I will play the Surza Saga. I will play this Divining Top. Dude, that's rad. Uh, we'll have to talk about Gold Border Legacy decks because at some point I want to get a collection of such things for our crowd here. This feels a whole lot like some Brian Kelly nonsense.
An ancestral. This is truly unfortunate. Yeah, I've been wanting to gather a set. I, I've started proxying up a bunch of stuff. That's fine. I've been starting to proxy up a bunch of stuff to keep on hand for when we have guests at our events. But it would be rad if you already had stuff. I'm going to spin this top. in this <clears throat> oh for sure I appreciate that Tom I don't know what this is, but I don't want to deal with it. We'll play this saga. I think I'm gonna sack. I'm gonna sack Soul Ring. What am I talking about? Get Citadel. That was the reason to not play the land first. For sure. Tom, I'll have to get in touch with you. I wanna keep a battle box on hands. None of this particularly matters. This root maze is unfortunate. That's not what I actually wanted to do, sure. Okay. I'm trying to figure out what I how I get out of this. My default would be to cast Ancestral, but we've already done that. I 
Here's time walk. Oh, right. name their ooze. I'm going to take all the pressure off. Stupid damping sphere is killing me. Sure. Is where the Sphinx being stuck in hand is actually terrible. This Tarmogoyf sucks. Another tundra, play flooded strands. I can't cast this merchant scroll unless I cast it now. I mean, yeah, that's the one I was looking for. Force of will. Oh, we're just going to die to this Tarmogoyf. I didn't even pay attention to my life total. We're dead to the Tarmogoyf. Alright. Mirroring Crusader, Swords to Plowshares. Goodbye, Flusterstorm. Force of Negation seems fine. Actually, maybe not. I feel like that's it. 
Yeah, I feel like we're just supposed to board in the Sword Stuff Plowshares and Mirroring Crusaders. I feel like if we resolve a Mirroring Crusader, opponent probably dies. I also need opponent not to just randomly slam Root Maze in a choke. That would be pretty great. We'll play first. I mean... We're gonna keep... Saga. Opponent feels like a deck that's on Wasteland. We're going to name Wasteland. Let me get this out in front of a root maze. Cavern of Souls. That's very good. Name Bird. Okay. It's for Bird of Paradise? It sure is. Fetch Tundra, say go. <sighs> Tell you what, quick mentor on this board also isn't terrible, now that I'm thinking about it. Mentor backed up by Force plus mi Mist Up. That seems okay. Opponent's deck is literally just why is vintage so blue dot deck. It's kind of upsetting. Resolves. Tinker, Citadel, Pearl, Preordain, Cruise, Oh. 
Goodbye, Tarmogoyf. Okay. Tundra. I have to discard four cards. I don't think that matters. Monitor, Islands, Scroll. Lavinia, I guess. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have to discard one more. prismatic ending I don't think anything resolves that I actually care about a noble hierarch can resolve I'm an idiot. I forgot that was going to cost me three life, not two. That's very good. Yup. Yup. I uh, should have just let that... Yep. Yep. Wow, that was unfortunate. I had that game. My brain said that's going to cost me two life. Vampiric Tutor costs two life. Not counting the one life I was paying from Bolas to Citadel to cast it. Big yikes. Big yikes. Because, yeah, we were fine there if I just wait. That is truly unfortunate. Well, sometimes you lose to yourself, friends, and that's okay. It's, it be like that sometimes. But uh yeah, like he here we go, I guess. We're gonna we're gonna see if we can redeem ourselves in round four. Big yikes. It's just one of those things, you know, I I've cast Vampiric Tutor enough times that my brain goes, Vampiric Tutor costs two life. Vampiric Tutor costs two life. I was like, yeah, we're good. We just vamp tutor end step, get time walk. Time, cast Time Walk for actual mana. <clears throat> I like this. Mox Resolves. I will not pay four for Mystic Grimora.
How does Lavinia feel? Opponent's gonna die behind this Remora. That's so good. I missed my token there, that's unfortunate. Get a top. Yep, missing my token there is actually huge. Plow is probably good, but I don't know for sure. I think we can do better. Amp, mystical. I'm just going to treat opponent as typical blue deck. We can reboard later if we need to. Ending is good because it hits random stuff like fish. Uh, Greg, we're two and one, and I lost the last one to myself. I'm the one with a mentor here, this is fine. Mox Opal, sure. Tundra, Tundra, Mentor,
Okay. This is Time Walk of Weakness. So opponent is a PO deck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have it, but if we take three down, that's five. We can get Lotus and still do it. Blue, black, one, two, three. Tinker results. Sick. We've done it. <laughs> All right. So, Greg, that's us three and one now, not two and one. We're uh, so for those joining late, including Greg, we are playing Esper Tinker, courtesy of Curtis Thomas Thompson. My apologies, Curtis Thompson, who recently performed well with it at a paper vintage event. Yes, those exist. Yeah, we are a, a mentor, tinker, Urza saga. Basically everything but bizarre workshop paradoxical outcome deck. Pretty great. I saw this in a deck dump and I was immediately attracted to it. One, because it contains the card monastery mentor. Two, because it contains the card tinker. And three, because I think that these kind of big blue throw a bunch of haymaker shells are actually very good right now especially when enough of your haymakers like when you're sitting on things like mentor and urza saga that aren't disrupted by pyroblast because i think that like rug is one of the decks that is actually quite good right now and if you can tax rugs resources in enough directions they have a hard time So, I see some new names hanging out tonight. If you are new to the channel, hello, welcome. Again, I am Adam of Grand Rapids, Michigan. We play a bunch of Eternal Magic on this channel. How did you find us? I am curious to see... I, I see some new names hanging out every once in a while in the viewers list, in the chat list. Like, I'm curious to see how people find me. Like, I know that obviously people like Greg here, here by choice, Tom... And is he still hanging out? No, are you still here? No, no, it's gone. Boo. Um, some of these people know me in real life, so they come to hang out. But I'm curious to see how other people find the channel. Greg, I agree. I've been saying Saga needs a restriction for quite some time. Uh, since I want to say at least February, when I played in. No, it wasn't 
February. It would have been Eternal, whenever Eternal Weekend was. Since at least Eternal Weekend, I've been saying that Saga needs a restriction. That card feels absolutely absurd. Like, that was just a cycle where I was like, okay. The world is my oyster. What do I get with this Urza Saga? I guess it's Black Lotus because it allows me to make two big dumb idiots to clock my opponent. Yeah, no, uh, Saga's busted. Like, Saga is absolutely absurd in this format specifically. Like, I... I think that Saga is borderline problematic other places. In Vintage, I think it's crossed the borderline. I, I think that it is absolutely an issue. And I think that we, we need to stop playing around with the notion that it's not. Um, yeah, it's, I, I actually kind of, I've grown to like Saga in Legacy because I like that it gives rise to a lot of shells that otherwise don't quite have the oomph. Like a lot of these mono black decks that have shown up in Legacy right now playing Saga. Like, the thing is that if all else fails, you just Urza Saga them and that's just good enough. Like, I think that's pretty cool. And like, it, it's just another avenue. Whereas here in Vintage, Saga is just such a ridiculous tutor. It tutors some of the most busted cards in the format. But yeah, I, I definitely think Saga needs a restriction. And I think that playing Saga this weekend is probably something I'm going to want to do. It's just like in what capacity. Oh, boo. We haven't had field matchmaking on stream in a while. That's pretty unfortunate. We're looking to fire this last one off. And so this is kind of the great thing. Like, I, one of the reasons that I think that playing Vintage Online is fantastic is if you are somebody who is looking to get into playing Magic Online competitively. And, like... Vintage vintage is not a, an entry-level event. You're going to have to take some time and really get to know what you're doing. But the beauty of Vintage is that, like, we've been here... Streamlabs is an hour and 17 minutes. And we've played four matches out of our league. And we've 2 owed three of them. Like, you can play a lot of Magic very quickly playing Vintage queues. When, when the queues function as intended. Um, you can play a lot of magic very quickly and that's rad because the thing is that vintage is also such an enjoyable format that if you are somebody that is looking to just kind of mess around there's a lot of magic to be played like there's a lot of different cool things you can be doing but also like if you are somebody that doesn't just want to like com constantly like lose hours and hours and hours of time or a bunch of EV like we're 3-2 already tonight. Or we're 3-1 already tonight. So we're at least making our money back. And I picked this deck up tonight for the first time. Greg, I agree. I do think that Tinker is like one of the... Tinker's probably the best thing to do in the format. I, I, I don't think it's particularly close. Bolas' Citadel has made it so that Tinker will always be one of the better things that you can be doing in Vintage. And the thing is that as the metagame shifts around it... Tinker just adapts. Uh, I played blue-black Tinker for Eternal Weekend, and that felt very good. Tonight, we've added white. And I think that the white splash for Mentor, Plow, Balance, Lavinia, all of these cards are fantastic. Singleton Prismatic Ending. Like, all of these cards are very good. Uh, I think that Shops has been bad for quite some time. I'm gonna keep this. This is like close. I'm gonna probe on one just to see what opponent's doing.
Show me your secrets, opponent. Oh, so opponent's on chops. Okay. This. 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 Speaking of shops, there's Mana Crypt. Mox Chat. Revoker's gonna resolve and I'm gonna be upset about it. That's a very good one off the top. Sphere resistance, sure thing. Marcus. This is an easy tinker line, by the way. This is end step mystical tutor for tinker. Untap Urza Saga is gonna get us Black Lotus. Lantern resolves. Why are you showing me new cards? Cluster Storm, Swords to Plowshares, Mental Misstep. End? We can talk about Force of Negation because it counters spheres. I don't think that's a conversation that's particularly worth having. We're just going to run this. Side note, the Tinker target that we get there is exactly Sphinx of the Steel Wind. We just get Sphinx and beat our shop's opponent to death. They can't really do anything about it. We can also just go ahead and get, uh... What's its face? We could also get... We can Tinker for Vault there. Take infinite turns. It's like pretty, pretty whatever from there. Like, and I think opponent knew that. That's why they conceded. Like, it, it almost doesn't matter, right? Like, we can get Time Bolt, take infinite turns, kill them eventually. We can get Sphinx of the Steel Wind, get an unanswerable threat, clock them. Like, it, it doesn't particularly matter. What's our end? What do we got here? <sighs> Gotta keep. Like, this is fine enough. We're just looking to cast the card Tinker. Go 
Willis resolves. I don't particularly care. Caracas, sure. This ghost quarter is actually very good. I need opponent to not realize how good this ghost quarter is. Phyllis is gonna resolve. So here we can DT for Lotus, Lotus, Mystical for Tinker, this is all fine. opponent act first Take the beat.
The argument there is to definitely get the Sphinx instead, but I think that given opponent has very little pressure in play. You can strip me, that's fine. Lotus, sure. Narset. <coughs> Tick down. Ruby. Sapphire. Ruby. Lavinia. Mentor. Tap for black. We've won this game. Hey, let's go! Well, okay. That feels pretty good. Yeah, so that deck feels sick. So there's a 4-1. Uh, probably could have been a 5-0. I punted the game because I constantly thought of Vampire Tutors costing me 2 life when off of Bolas' Citadel it actually cost 3. So, that sucks. But, sick! Uh, this feels pretty great. Uh, we might just run this back on Thursday. This feels pretty dope. I like this quite a lot. But, let's go ahead and do the thing we're doing on this stream now and open chests. Yeah. Lotlith Troll. Ah, yes. Canadian Highlander All-Star Lotlith Troll. Ah. A Void Winnower and a Niv Magus Elemental. Once upon a time, this was a playable legacy card, kids. Once upon a time, you would play this in, like, a Delver shell and Flusterstorm your own garbage. And you could exile your copies of Fluster to Niv Magus Elemental by flustering your own spells. What a crazy time that was. Yeah. Cruel Ultimatum in 35 play points. That's good. We were talking earlier about uh, one of... I didn't want that on my wish list. Curse of Hospitality. Creatures attacking Enchanted Player have Trample. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to Enchanted Player, they exile the top of their library. Creatures controller may play that card. That's cool. And Merit Lage of Slumber. Sure. Rad. Well, okay. That seems rad. So, overall thoughts. Uh, I will bring up the deck list again real quick. So this is the list we played tonight. I will zoom in a little bit for those who are not familiar with this particular layout. So this is Esper Tinker. Um, this felt fantastic. This felt very, very good. The one matchup that we lost, I think that we could have won. I just punted game two like a complete ham sandwich. Uh, my brain kept saying that Vampire Tutor cost two life, Vampire Tutor cost two life, Vampire Tutor cost two life. Uh, not thinking about the one extra life I would have to pay by casting it off Bolas' to Citadel. And we died because of it. Um, I think that beyond that, if I cast Vampiric Tutor from hand the following turn, we just win the game. I'm not 100% sure that I was able to do that, but I think it's close. 
so that feels pretty good uh beyond that like this felt good shops didn't feel like it was even a real game of magic um i would like to see how it performs against bizarre decks like there's so much here for bizarre leyline rav trap tabernacle soul guy lantern all of these cards are for bizarre matchups so i am genuinely curious like how how does this fare in the bizarre matchup so interesting things uh curious to see how that pans out but i have a i have a feeling we're gonna run this back on thursday this felt very good and this is the kind of thing i like to do in vintage so i think that we will be trying this again on thursday if anybody else has any other suggestions or any sweet deck lists they might like to see on stream get at me uh yell at me on twitter uh feel free to whisper on twitch or uh send me messages any other place you can find me my discord is down below send me messages i'm on usually attached to discord most of the day so i am i am always open to hear suggestions and feedback uh greg that is very possible it is very possible that we can jam some games tomorrow i will keep you posted but that is it for me for this evening everyone i am going to go wrap some things up and get myself some sleep uh, but I will see you all again on Thursday. Again, I have a suspicion we're going to be playing this deck again, but we'll see if anything jumps out at me in the meantime. <sighs> Between now and then, I hope that you all have a fantastic week. I will see you again on Thursday. Cheers, everyone.